it's, it's something that somebody's <coughs> carved out of wood. Come through. Oh. <laughs> it's sporting the place up a bit. <laughs> yeah. All I've got to do now is find a place on the bloody wall for it. <laughs> That'll be the hardest part. Oh. Apologies for the way it is just at the moment because as you can see this is a, this is an extremely small shed with a with a lot of stuff in it. But uh, so it gets used for parking stuff for a lot of the time. But this lathe was made by Johnny Pickles in Barn Oldswick in 1955 and he made it to replace a smaller lathe that we'll have a look at in a minute uh, because he wanted a bigger lathe that was in essential, uh, essentially an ornamental turning lathe and the, the, the key part about this one is that it's got a double spindle because there's a medallion machine goes with it and it's got a uh, tangential dividing gear built into the headstock and he used it mainly for cutting clock gears for his um, uh, turret clocks. He started off making ordinary clocks and grandfather clocks and made a smaller lathe to do it but then when he got onto the turret clocks he had to make bigger gears so he had to make a bigger lathe. So he bought this bed out of a scrap yard it had the tailstock already with it but he made the headstock and the tangential gear and the saddle, he made them himself. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but he was working, running his own firm as a full-time engineer. He made that lathe in his spare time in six months. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I love Johnny. And uh, you can't see him, but underneath, there are more change wheels for it than you can poke a stick at. And the reason for that is that he just got, uh, he was doing a lot of work for the mills, so he used to get gear wheels from the mills and recut them and remanufacture them so they could be used on this lathe. And that lathe, with that gear in, you can turn any thread there is. And you'll notice it's all belt drive with a line shaft. That motor is the original Orris Green motor that, uh, that Johnny bought and would you believe if that motor you wouldn't want to carry it very far. It's a one horse motor, a one horse single phase motor. It's all been rewound and new bearings and, uh, and something that a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, modern engineers have forgotten is that a belt driven lathe like that gives you the best finish in the world because there's no vibration from the gears and, uh, and, it, and the gear and, and the, the lathe is a pleasure to use it's, it's a wonderful lathe This is another of Johnny's lathes, Johnny Pickle's lathes. He got married in 1925 and he wanted a lathe and he fancied a birch lathe that was made in Manchester, a very high quality lathe, but he couldn't afford one. So being Johnny, he went to the foundry, took some patterns down, got the castings made and he built this lathe. And honestly, it is beautiful. And the main things to notice about it is, one of the characteristics of the birch lathe is, notice that the, uh, the, the saddle is on the front of the lathe, not on the bed. And that means that you've got an adjustment here, and it's locked off, you lock it off wherever it needs to be, but you've an adjustment here, and it's rise and fall on the, uh, on the cross slide. So there's never any trouble about getting a centre. You never need packing pieces under a tool. Uh, 
And the other thing about it is, it's got div divisions on the front of the bowl gear that that you can use using this uh, using this little pointer. You put it out of gear and you use that little pointer and it'll drop in and hold it. But also on the back end, you've got a, a 180 tooth worm wheel and another tangential gear. And there are spare plates for this with different drillings. And in fact, if you turn this, I think, it, no, that one's plain on the back, but some of them are drilled both sides. And uh, it means that you can you can make any division you want or cut any thread you want. And, uh, and then we'd be an imperial, of course. It's very easy to work in thirds. <laughs> but, uh, and the motor again is orange green and it's original, just a quarter horse motor. Oh, sorry. That was what John would call a cop a cock up. Uh, you see again, it runs off a line shaft, and this uh, pulley here runs your overhead gear, because essentially this lathe was meant for ornamental turning, where your your, your chuck doesn't turn. And you have milling cutters that you run in. Uh, you, you run milling cutters essentially with ornamental turning. You can take something round and make it square. I know that sounds silly, but uh, it actually is. And on the back here, there's all the bits that uh, that uh, I've saved up over the years as they've fallen out of Newton's workshop. There's the ornamental side turning rest for it that fits on here. Um, there's uh, oh there's uh, there's there's some of the ornamental stuff that goes with it. There's a an, I've forgotten what the name of these things is, but uh, you can you can move it. It's an eccentric chuck, and that that work that that fits on here as well. It took me about two years, and basically it took me about two years to refurbish it, and uh, and basically it's. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's just a gem of a lathe. Any of these wealthy ornamental turning men down in London would give, give the, an arm and a leg for it. But uh, unfortunately, they can't have it, not till I die. And then they'll have to fight over it. Do you remember me saying on the big lathe that it was a double spindle? Well, this is something that Johnny made. It's what you call a medallion machine. And you put it onto the lathe, you have uh, two chucks running synchronised to each other on the front of the lathe. And as you're turning, one chuck has the original in and the other has a cutter in. And there's a, follow, uh, has a follower in it. And so the follower follows whatever you're copying. And basically you can copy a coin or a, a, a cameo brooch or something like that. Again, mainly intended for working in ivory and, uh, and very hard woods, but it will work on uh, soft metals. And, uh, and it's, it's just, again, it's just beautifully made. And if, you had, if we had time and fitted it up and showed you, it can be fitted up to the overhead gear as well so that it works automatically. I mean, uh, that man, Johnny, was, uh, he was a wonderful fella. And in case you're wondering what things like this are that are laid about, I used to run big steam engines. And these are, these are cotter pins out of a steam engine. And it's an engine I was running, we had a big problem with it, it was making a noise and we, I found out one day that it was because one of these keys was worn, so we put new ones in. And I decided, to, I saved the old ones because I do that. That looks nothing. But Johnny Pickles always said that the test of a good turner, there were two things he had to do. One was make a chuck back accurately and the other was make a gyroscope. So uh, being a silly bugger, I thought I'd make a gyroscope. The only thing is, <laughs> I slipped up. I've made it too heavy. There's no way I can spin it fast enough for it to stand up. I did make one that worked, but I gave it to my daughter. But even so... I think if you have a look, if you, you can take that in your hands and have a look at it, it's, it's not a bad little piece of turning. 
but uh, there's more to them than meets the eye. But if you want to give yourself a test, make a gyroscope. And there I have a single track mine, as you can see, because I used to run steam engines. And uh, here's, here's a, couple of, a couple of engines that I've made. One's, uh, one's the compound, vertical compound, marine engine. And the other one is another marine engine, but it's bigger. And basically, it's, uh, it's Stuart design. But Newton and I changed the patterns and made them different. And as you can see, we made a, we made a bigger cylinder as well, uh, which I think looks far better on that Stuart engine. If I was building another of those Stuart 5As, I'd put the big cylinder on. A couple of Jubilee clips and some fittings that don't quite fit, so it's not absolutely airtight. But it'll do for us, oh. right? Now... Uh, I think the best thing to... Ah, no, no, I want you here. Now, on this side of me. Now, hold the bed here, and if you feel, you can, it, uh, you can butt it up against there. there. Right. Just butt it up against uh, there, and, uh, and don't put your fingers in it. Are you right? <laughs> Right, we'd better have Debs running as well, and then you know, then you can't come back and complain and ask for money back on the guarantee. Uh, shall be a sec. As I say, this is uh, this is only it's all bloody temporary. It's all it's all a lash up. We'll just connect up to Debs. So are these engines identical, Stanley? Yeah, yeah, there's no difference between them. Apart from the name plate. Eh? The twins. Yeah. Would one would one part of another engine fit? Could you swap parts over or that um, within reason? I mean, haven't some been... bits would. Yeah. But uh, most bits wouldn't. Because, because they've been hand built and hand fitted. No, it's yeah. uh, it's like the old steam engines. It's like the uh, old steam engines in the mills. Uh, they were not mass produced, they were all individually built and hand fitted, yeah. And, and hand fitted, and that's why you'll find if you take one to bits, that uh, you'll find that they have uh, they're all numbered, the parts are all numbered. Now, put that one outside onto, onto the bench outside, okay. and let's let's set Debs up. God, bloody heavy. Of course they want to be heavy. Notice the fine engineering with the plumber's, plumber's wrench. <laughs> Engineers have shit them. He says we'll shit a few more, we're short. <laughs> You're not recording that are you? Oh no. Oh, oh good. Be as bad as you say, twat and bastard all the time. I don't mind it, but I, I do laugh when people complain. <laughs> I think, Christ Almighty, you've never been in a shipyard. Ah, I was just going to say, there's something wrong there, but... Right, Mick, you're on engine mounting <coughs> duties again. Really? Uh, see, see, look at that, look at that. You, you can see how airtight them pistons are. It's... Uh, what do you got in there for a ring? Is that graphite as well or is it a... Eh? What, what's in, what's, what sort of pistons? Graphite and asbestos. Graphite and asbestos. Well, well not, it'll not be real asbestos, is it? Eh? It'll not be real asbestos, so... Is that thing on? Aye. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Let's put it this way: it's the modern equivalent. That's <laughs> but it's what they. Um, it's uh, they, they, a brass piston with a soft packing uh, like that instead of a ring. Is what all the old 
miniature steam locomotive engineers used to use and they mostly use non-ferocious pistons and uh, and castings and and they last for years and the great advantage is if you're running them on compressed air like this you don't run them get some condensating and the next time you come to them you find they're seized up because they're rusty you right yeah. pressure's a bit lower now but even so but i'll just let it keep running and uh, let it get uh, let it get let it get right down and you'll see it will run down to about it'll run down to about five pounds these valves are just how I set them uh, by eye when I was uh, when I was building them. If you were to take the lids off and play about with them a bit, you'll get it running even better than this. But that engine, even as it is, the old fellas would have run the lathes off one of them. It'll probably turn out on hundred pounds. It'll turn out about a quarter more. That was plenty. You know, just that little lathe in the front room. That was a quarter or more of it. See, that's still quite happy to run in. I'm trying to start up. I'm just having a look and I'll tell you. That's down to about 15 pounds. We've gone shut the valve down here, haven't we? Right. But even so, I mean, you can stop it at that. Put it back on. And it, it'll start quite happy. So, and it'll start... It'll start quite happily down at five pounds. So if you want to rig an airline up into Dead's boudoir so that she can show it running for a day, she can rig her up a ten pound airline and she'll be quite safe. That's really the test of valve setting, you know, how long they'll keep going on very low pressure and you know keep keep running evenly. If you see that it's running fairly evenly. It's not that at all. Could be worse. I mean that now is running off nothing. That's running off less than five pounds. Yeah, see you don't need to hold it now. That's that's that that's on about three or four pounds that. It will of course eventually stop. Once again, it just remains to see it. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes in kind words that are coming in towards my dad and Demi wife. Thanks very much.